Okay, so this is the 2021 Higher Level Leaving Cert Maths Paper 1, question 9. So in part A here we have a cup of coffee. It's freshly brewed to 95 degrees Celsius. The temperature T in degrees centigrade, uh, which is the same effectively, of the coffee as it cools is given by the formula T of T is equal to A times E to the power of minus 0 0.081 times T plus 20, where A is a constant and T is time measured in minutes from when the coffee was brewed. Now we've got to show that A is equal to 75. So we're going to start with our formula here, T of T is equal to A times E to the power of minus 0 0.081 times T plus 20. So what we know here is at uh, T is equal to 0, so at time zero here, the uh, temperature will be 95 degrees. So we can say here that 95 is equal to A times E to the power of minus 0 0.081. The time is zero, then we've got to add 20. So if we work this out, just subtract 20 here, you get 75. Uh, that'll give us A here, E to the power of 0 is just 1. And that's it, so our constant here, our A is equal to 75. Now let's have a look at part 2. Explain what the value 20 in the formula represents in the context of the uh, coffee cooling. So if we have a look at our formula here, we have T of T is equal to um, 75 e to the power of minus 0 0.081 times T plus 20. So it's this 20 here that they're asking about. Well you can see here that um, whatever time you put in here, this 20 is always going to remain constant. So if time goes into infinity, what happens is this effectively here will become 0. Uh, 0 times 75 is 0, so you're just left with 20. So the 20 is really the temperature that the coffee will eventually become if it's left indefinitely. That's what the uh, 20 is. So it could be maybe room temperature. Probably is room temperature. Okay, so what I'm going to say here is it's uh, the temperature that the coffee will reach if left indefinitely. So if you were to leave the coffee uh, for a long period of time, eventually it will reach 20 degrees. Okay, so that's uh, part two. Let's have a look at part three. Uh, find the decrease in the temperature of the coffee 10 minutes after brewing. Give your answer correct to the nearest whole number. So we know that it starts at 95 degrees. So we've got to work out what temperature will it reach after 10 minutes and then subtract the two. So we've got to work out T10. So uh, T10 is going to be 75 times e to the power of minus 0 0.081 multiplied by 10. And we've got to add 20 here. Uh, you can do that on your calculators and what you get is 53 point three six four three five and so on okay so that's the temperature that it will reach after uh, 10 minutes so what you've got to do now is work out the decrease the decrease in temperature is then going to be equal to 95 degrees minus fifty three point three six four three five and that will give you 41.635 and so on. Now we want it to the nearest whole number, so that's going to be 42 degrees to the nearest whole number. And that's it. That's it for part three. So let's have a look at part B. In part B, we are given t of t is equal to 75 e to the power minus 0 0.081 times t plus 20. 
gives the temperature of the coffee at time t. If the ideal temperature to drink coffee is 82 degrees C, find the time to the nearest second that uh, it takes for the coffee to reach this temperature. So how long is it going to take to reach 82 degrees? So again, our formula, T of T here is 75 e to the power of minus 0 0.081 times t plus 20. Now this time we are given the temperature and we're told that it's uh, 82. So we've got to put in 82 over here. And we've got to work backwards to find what t is. e to the power of minus 0 0.081 times t, which we've got to work out, plus 20. Okay, so what I'll do first is maybe subtract the 20, so that'll give me 62. So that's 62 is equal to 75e to the power of minus 0 0.081 times t, and then divide by uh, 75. So that'll give me 62 over 75 is equal to e to the power of minus 0 0.081 times t. So the next thing I'm going to do is just get the log of both sides. I'll use natural log, so natural log of 62 over 75 is equal to the log of e to the power of something is just going to be equal to the something, so we're just going to it'll cancel out the e if you like. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is just divide across by minus 0 0.081. So that'll finally just give me a t here of uh, 2.35 2.35 uh, and so on. And remember that's in minutes. So it says here in the question, find the time to the nearest second that it takes for the coffee to reach uh, this temperature. So if we just come up here, we've got 2.35 minutes. I'm going to multiply that by 60 and that'll give me 141 seconds uh, to the nearest second. That's it uh, for part B. Let's have a look at part C. Find to the nearest uh, degree C the temperature the coffee has reached when T prime T is equal to minus 4.05, where T prime T is the rate at which the coffee is cooling in uh, degree C per minute. Okay, so what we've got to do is take our original formula, T of T is equal to 75 e to the power of minus 0 0.081 t plus 20 and we've got to work out t dash t or t prime t uh, differentiated in other words. So that's going to give us uh, 75 e to the power of minus 0 0.081 t. Um, now because this is not e to the power of t, it's e to the power of some function of t, we've got to use the chain rule here. So you've got to multiply all of that by 0. Point, actually minus 0 0.081 and then if we differentiate the 20 out here at the end we just get 0. So when you multiply the 75 by mi minus 0 0.081 you'll get um, minus 243 over 40 that's e to the power of minus 0 0.081 t. So this is our t dash t here, our differentiated function. We're told that when you differentiate it, you get minus 4.05. So I'm going to let that equal to minus 4.05 here. And then we just got to work out t from this. So let me see, the first thing I can do here is just divide across by uh, 243 over 40 and the signs will cancel as well. So we end up here with 2 over 3 on the left hand side and e to the power of minus 0 0.081 times t on the right hand side. Again, what we need to do here is just get the log of both sides. So get the log of the left hand side. So we got log. 2 over 3 is equal to the log of the right hand side is just going to be the power minus 0 0.081 times t and then just divide across by minus 0 0.081 so that will finally here give me a t of 
2075 probably don't need that many decimal places but that's our time so what have we actually worked out here it says find to the nearest degree C the temperature the coffee has reached when the rate of change is minus 4.05 so we found the time uh, that it takes or the time at which I should say the time at which the rate of change is minus 4.05 so we've got to put that into our original formula again to work out the actual temperature the actual temperature the coffee has reached when uh, the rate of change is minus 4.05 so let's work through that so we have again we have t of t is equal to 75 e to the power minus 0.081 t plus 20 and we've got to put the time in here now so that's going to be time t of 5.00574 and so on put that in there so that's 75 times e to the power minus 0 0.081 and then we're putting in 5.00574275 uh, plus 20 again that's all only calculator work at this stage when you work that out you'll get 70 degrees so it works out nicely so that should be our answer there that is the temperature the coffee has reached when the rate of change of temperature is minus 4.05 and that is in degrees C okay so let's have a look at D here we have um, a sugar cube which is put into the coffee the sugar keeps its cube shape as it dissolves as the sugar cube dissolves its volume decreases at a constant rate of 1 over 20 cubic centimeters per second so the the volume decreases so that's uh, d that's d v d t that's the rate at which the sugar cubes volume changes and that's going to be minus 1 over 20 cubic centimeters cubic centimeters per second so we have dv dt let x be the side length of the cube at time t find the rate of change of x of t when the volume of the cube reaches 1 over 64 centimeters cubed so you can imagine your cube um, coffee cube is going to be like this and each side is going to be x x times x times x so the volume the volume it's just going to be length times width times height which is x times x times x which is x cubed I'm guessing we're going to need to differentiate this so it's going to be dv dx which is going to be 3x squared let's have a look at what we what we were actually asked here we we're asked to find the rate of change of x the rate of change of x is dx dt so this is one of these chain rule kind of problems so we put the dx up here we put the dt down here then we've got to work out what to put here that will cancel to leave us with our dx dt well we can see here we're dealing with uh, volume here so it's going to be dv and dv and you can see here we've already worked out dv dx and look here we've got dx dv so all we've got to do is flip this upside down and that will give us this here uh, dv dt we have as well we've worked out it well we were actually given that in the question so we have both of those so let's just work through those then we have uh, dx dv well dv dx is 3x squared over 1 so dx dv is just 1 over 3x squared just flip it upside down and over here you've got minus 1 over 20 I'm going to put the minus here in front and it's going to be 1 over 20 here so that's our dx dt how the the edges of the um, cube are changing with respect to time so that would be centimeters per second okay so what were we actually asked here we were asked to find the rate of change of x when the volume of the cube reaches 1 over 6 now our formula here that we have dx dt which is what we've got to work out involves the only variable in here is x and the bit of information we're given is uh, volume this is volume here so the volume of our cube is going to be 1 over 64 centimeters cubed so we got to work backwards to find x 
So the way you would do that is you know that the volume is worked out here by multiplying x by x by x. So all we've got to work out then is the cube root of 1 over uh, 64. Uh, our x then is going to be equal to x then is going to be equal to the cube root of 1 over 64 at this particular time. So the cube root of 1 is 1, the cube root of 64 is 4. So now we know what our x is. So all we've got to do is stick it in here. So that's, um, this is when x is equal to a quarter, or the volume is equal to 1 over 64. Uh, dx dt is going to be equal to minus 1 over 3 times 1 over 4 squared times 1 over 20. And when you do that, you get minus, minus um, 4 over 15 centimeters per second. So the, uh, the edges of the cube are decreasing at a rate of uh, 4 over 15 centimeters every second. And that's it for this particular question.